Yes, indeed, folks, the sounds of both mechanical men. Here on Blue, please. On cynicalbrits.com. With myself, Todd Whiskey. Uh, it's more of a chilled out show today. No big surprises. Ugh, last night was exhausting, needless to say, with the Blue, please, and the shout craft, and the crying, and the screaming, and the ugh, unpleasantness. I wonder if that YouTube video is going to surpass 10,000 views. That I would be... Oh, there we go. Yep, there we go. <laughs> 100, sorry, 100,972 views as of right now. Broke the 100k. Oh, yes. Uh, never saw that one coming, did I? Good lord. Okay, ladies and gents. Let's talk a little about the Twitter chat. And in the meantime... The chat room is lagging on singlebrit.com at the moment for some reason. Tiny chat, the service we use, occasionally ha- goes on the blink. You can send me uh, any question for the Q&A later, either via the chat room, send me a PM on there, or on irc.quakenet.org in the hash or pound Cynical Brit channel, or you can email the Murloc at cynicalbrit.com. Any of the above, do those, and we'll do the Q&A a little bit later. Any question you like, I don't really mind. If it's too weird and creepy, I won't answer it, just FYI. Prefer questions about WoW and stuff like that, as you might imagine. Okay. So, this Twitter dead, ch- dead, uh, Twitter dead chat. Right, okay. Twitter dev chat happened last night. And we're going to go through this and see what's good. I like to do this whenever they do a dev chat. Simply because it's nice, easy content. And it's good to sort of dissect what they have to say. So, you can follow along, if you wish, by heading over to MMO Champion. Now, if you're listening to the live stream, this is the first one on there. It's called Blizz Chat. Develop the chat on Twitter, 14 slash 16. Otherwise, let's go and have a look at MMO Champion. If you're listening to the archive, I'll also put a link to the show. Link to the show. What am I talking about? God, I'm losing my mind. A link to the site in the show notes on cynicalbrit.com. So, let's talk a little bit about this. First thing is first. They start off with a big section on Cataclysm. This is where most of the good meat comes in. We've got various categories that they talked about. A lot of info on Cataclysm, Masteries, some class mechanic stuff, Cataclysm raids and dungeons, and some other stuff like items, PvP, and some class-specific stuff, which I don't really care about. We'll probably skip a lot of that just for the sake of it. In the meantime, let's kick it off, shall we? Right, so they start off by putting out the questions, and then they give this quite short answer. The first question is this. Do you intend to have all 280% flying mounts scaled to 310% when a 310% mount is earned, or will only the purchased mounts do so? The answer is this. Our current plan is that in Cataclysm, you can learn a new rank of flying that lets all flying mounts move at 310 even current 280% mounts. That will probably be the fastest mounts we'll ever get. We don't like it when you get a 310 mount and you stop using your old ones as a result. Right, okay. I don't know how to feel about that, honestly. I understand the idea of training up new speeds and things, but I think the whole point of a 310 is that there is a degree of exclusivity. Now... That exclusivity is important to some people. I mean, some people are okay with it just being, hey, you know, it's a mount, blah, 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 and it looks nice, and that's fine. But in reality, it's nice that there was also a benefit to it. If you get rid of the 310, and you take away that exclusivity, and you say, you can just train this, then it it's not special anymore, is it? Now, you can do that and then say, oh, well, he is 350, say, 350%. But the thing is, they said that it'll probably be the fastest that mounts will ever get. I'm not keen on that idea at all. Why not give people that achieve a slight edge? I mean, this is a convenience thing more so than anything. It's not about 30% faster on a scale. And that's not even that big a deal, honestly. So why make it trainable, of all things? I mean, personally, I like the idea that if you have a 310 mount, every mount should go at 310. Simple as that. Because that means that you have achieved the ability to do that via hard work. And then you can use whatever mount you want. That said, they didn't. They haven't said how exactly you're going to learn this. It might be a gold thing. It might be a quest. It might even be from a raid dungeon. We don't really know that. 
Now, additional question uh, to follow us up on this one. If 310 speed is becoming trainable, does that mean we'll be able to fly in Azeroth from the get-go? The answer is, we have considered the idea and the concept of old weather flying. Oh, that, that's terrible, really. That really is bad. <laughs> I, it shouldn't surprise me, honestly. Blizzard coming up with some terrible puns. Just kidding. More than likely, you'll just be able to fly from the beginning. Cool. Excellent. I understand why they did that whole cold weather flying thing. It's like, we want you to experience the content, blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry. Give people the choice. If they want to experience the content, they'll experience the content from the ground. If they don't, they'll fly over it. Big deal. Next question. You mentioned at BlizzCon that all races would be getting revamped racial abilities. Do you care to shed some light on any of them? Answer is this. We're going to do something similar to what we did in Wrath of the Lich King, where we just rehash them to make sure they're balanced and feel cool. Something you could see is dwarves getting a bonus to archaeology or undead getting a new activated racial ability that will be more useful in PvE. That sounds good, honestly. And the idea of increasing the value of racials is incredibly important. It gives identity to classes that are now getting rather homogenized. I mean, if you've got class homogenization, then either you unhomogenize the classes or you give diversity somewhere else. You've got to distinguish one player character from another. It's got to be more than just a skin. Honestly, it's got to be more than just a model swap. I've always been in favor of every racial being overpowered as opposed to nerfing other racials down to a certain level. The problem with racials right now is that they all pretty much got hit with the nerf bat. And as a direct result of being hit with the nerf bat, they're not all that great anymore. They don't really distinguish the classes. People make the choice now in regards to race based on cosmetic appearance as opposed to any actual benefits that you get. I mean, remember back in the day when the stat bonuses actually sort of made a difference. Obviously, the stat bonuses for characters make no difference now whatsoever. They might as well not even be there. I mean, why is it that we can't have a little bit more diversity in that regard? What, we're going to cry about balance now? Uh, how about diversity? How about balance via variety? Yeah? Meta balance, as it were. We're not talking about a strict form of balance. We're talking about balance by having so many different elements enter the equation that balance ceases to become a factor anymore. This is not StarCraft. We don't have to worry so much about intricate balance. What we do have to worry about is the idea that someone is going to pick a race on the basis of something more than whether or not it looks cool. Because right now that's not happening at all. And that is a big deal for me. I want to see all of these racials revamped and made far more powerful and useful. Absolutely, go for that. I would be extremely happy with that one. Okay, and on we go. Let's have a look at the, second, the next question here. Anyway. Can you give us more information on how and what Path of the Titans will reward you with? Talent points and lock talents? Okay, so this is the system here. The paths unlock a new kind of glyph called an ancient glyph. Those don't enhance class abilities since they are designed to work with any class. They do grant bonuses that might be useful to a wide variety of classes as well as offer some actual new abilities as well. If you... and I've scrolled down, that's really stupid. If you think your action bar is full, then you might want to head for passive bonuses instead of active abilities. Okay, that's kind of neat. You're going to have a choice between the two. Intriguing, ladies and gentlemen. I like the idea of Path of the Titans. Again, that's about diversifying the classes beyond where they are right now. Give it, and funnily enough, it matches up quite nicely to that email we had earlier. That, you remember that thing about progression paths? There. Yeah. That's another way of progressing. That's another way of diversifying. That sounds good, honestly. I would like to see that happen. And, of course, it is happening in Cataclysm. Very positive idea. Next question, will the new guild perk system kill a lot of smaller guilds? Answer is, our goal is not to encourage players to have to change their existing guild. We realize some players like smaller guilds and some like larger guilds. We don't want to ask you to change that. The question is, of course, how exactly they're going to make that happen. The issue with the guild leveling, more so than anything, is that if it's going to be a combined effort, then surely a bigger guild is going to progress faster than a smaller one. And if that doesn't happen then that's going to encourage players to form really small guilds. Maybe even say you want to do some crazy guild leveling or whatever. You split your guild down the middle and you split your guild into, say, 10-man teams. And if it's, di if it's 
sort of done in a ratio as opposed to each person contributes a set amount, then the smaller guilds level up faster. So it's kind of a catch-22 more so than anything else. I don't know what to think of that, honestly. I would suggest that most people would be sensible. <laughs> I'm sorry. How foolish of me. No, people won't be sensible at all. They will do the path of least resistance. They will do whatever it is and whatever it takes to make sure they level up in their guild as fast as humanly possible. As to how that's going to work, I don't know. It seems to be one way or the other. Either you're going to have a situation where a smaller guild levels up faster because of the way that the ratios are, or you're going to have a system where a larger guild levels up faster. How are you going to balance that? I really don't know. It would be interesting to see, and we shall see what happens. Right, next one. Uh, any improvements to the UI are being considered? Uh, I don't care. <laughs> any kinds of UI? No, 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 no. Uh, screw all of that, quite frankly. UI changes are boring. If you want to read it, you can go read it yourself. It's like, yeah, we're going to add this, we're going to add that, we're going to polish stuff up, yeah, whatever. Right. What changes are you most excited about? There's the interesting question for Blizzard. This is the last one in the general cataclysm category. So, the answer is this. We are changing the old zones probably more than the most players realize. A place like Stone Talon is virtually unrecognizable. It has all new quests and item rewards and dramatic changes to the landscape. A zone like Western Plaguelands has actually been updated to reflect the fact that the Scourge are in retreat. Which is not to say that the zone is without its dangers, however. Everywhere you're going to be, you're going to see something new and surprising. I think a lot of players are excited about the level 80 to 85 experiences they should be in the Goblin and Worgen zones, which, if anything, are better than the Dead Knight, Death Knight starting zone. If you can believe that. Well, I can believe that. I never really liked that zone, honestly, but hey, I think I'm in the minority. But I think a lot of players, they say, are going to want to re-roll new characters of existing races and classes just to see how everything has changed. I don't know about that. It is possible. It doesn't surprise me that they're going for the major overhaul, the major update in terms of things like items, because, well, let's be honest here, the items right now are not great. I mean, the leveling up system is not great, the quests really aren't great, the questing hubs are not all that well designed. It's a bit of a mess overall. <laughs> what else can you say? I might play it, honestly. I might have a look at it. It sounds like a reasonable idea. I can't say that I'll get through an entire alt. I mean, I've never succeeded so far. I only got to level 60 with my rogue for Arcanist Belt by using the Recruiter Friend system. So I don't know whether or not I'll really play an alt again. Maybe I'll RAF it up again. Maybe do a troll druid. Vorpatinga form or Vorpatinga. I don't know how we pronounce it. Whatever, it's that stupid rabbit with horns. Now, we'll move briefly on to Masteries before we go to the break. And first question in the Masteries category is this. Can you go into more detail on Vengeance? As it sounds like... Off tanks will be at a significant disadvantage now. Okay, I don't know anything about this, so I'm not even going to bother. So let's go on to the next one. With armor class bringing mastery bonuses, will players never want to downrank from, say, leathered cloth? The answer is, that's the idea, really. They can still wear the older armor, but they'll lose some stats from doing so. Fair, honestly. <laughs> I don't like druids stealing my cloth gear, so I am fully in favor of the mastery. Next question. Can you allow points spent in your off tree to give a diminished amount of mastery bonus towards your main tree so as to not nerf hybrid specs. Okay. Interesting idea. The answer is this. Does the elemental shaman really want more melee damage, though? Does the shadow priest really want to heal better? If anything, it feels like it would be a nerf to hybrid, since a warlock would get more damage from any tree, while a DPS hybrid would only get more damage from their tree. If hybrids end up coming out a little short, we'll compensate in other ways instead of doing hacky things with the mastery system. Yeah, I would have to agree with that, honestly. It sounds incredibly dumb to allow players to dip into multiple mastery trees. The point of the mastery trees is they're designed around your spec. Uh, the pure class stuff's going to be a bit generic, whereas the rest of it is going to be very specific with the hybrid class and things like that. I mean, that makes sense to me, honestly. I don't see the problem with that. Now, we'll do the last one on Masteries, and then we'll go to the break. Compared to some third Mastery bonuses, Radiance, etc., others are a little boring, plus crit damage, etc. Intended comments? 
Well, the answer is this. The mastery bonuses are obviously a really new concept. The risk on the one hand is that they're too boring and don't affect gameplay. And on the other extreme, they take specs which already have a lot going on and just make them overcomplicated. For now, we want to implement a range, see what feels best in beta. We expect to iterate on these a lot. Well, to be honest, I think the best way of doing this would be how to have, say, a couple of boring-ish mastery bonuses and then a really crazy one, like an ultimate mastery bonus if you go really far into the tree. That seems to be the way that it would work for me. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Hopefully, we'll see that happen. My name is Total Biscuit. You're listening to Two Please here on CynicalBrit.com, the second Blue Please of the week. This probably will not happen again, just FYI. We'll play some music, and I'm going to be back with more from the Twitter chat. Go check it out, and email your questions in for the Q&A. The Murloc at CynicalBrit.com. And yes, the chat is lagging horribly for whatever reason. I'll be right back after this, folks. Enjoy. <laughs> 